In today's video, we're flying to Bora Bora to stay at the intercontinental Le Moana Bora Bora Resort. One big favor before we dive in is to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you like content like this. Le Moana is the first resort we're visiting in the Bora Bora series and the resorts will get more luxurious as we progress. As a disclaimer, these are from the archives since we finally got around to editing them. Not much has changed except maybe the prices for food and the excursions are probably more expensive now. We took a United flight from San Francisco to Papete. Since we had status with United, we were upgraded to Economy Plus. There is a bit more legroom compared to Economy, and each seat comes with a pillow and blanket. The meals weren't anything spectacular. Dinner was chicken strips of orzo, and the pre-landing meal was a turkey and cheese sandwich. Since we were arriving at night, we stayed overnight at the airport hotel before taking a small plane to Bora Bora. Once you land in Bora Bora, you have two options to get to Le Moana. The first is the simplest, taking the hotel boat. The cost was around 65 US dollars per person round trip. That means if you have two people, it would be around $130. The second option is taking public transportation. Air Tahiti has a free shuttle boat that departs from the Bora Bora airport. Follow the transfer sign to the boat dock. The shuttle takes around 15 minutes to arrive to the main town. The benefit of taking the free shuttle is that you can explore the town and visit the local grocery store to stock up on snacks or alcohol before going to the resort. And it's going to save you a significant amount of money if you decide to get alcohol from here. There's also the Bora Bora Visitor Center. You can store your luggage here at your own risk while you explore the town or find the ATM. The ATM is located a few hundred more feet away. The taxi to Le Moana was around $20. Today we're at the Intercontinental Hotel and we got an upgrade to the overwater bungalow. So let's take a look around. Over here is the main living room area. So there's a work desk that's filled with our bags, full couch area. And if you want some fresh air, the windows over here open. This is a really cool coffee table that also doubles as a living area for fish. Underneath our bungalow are a few coral gardens. So you can see the fish. And if you want to get a closer look or feed them, table also opens up. So at nighttime, there is a light switch so it can be illuminated and then we'll probably obtain some fish food from somewhere so we can get some pretty cool shots. Okay, if we go over here, have a coffee station, refrigerator, and teas. Step over here. This is the bedroom, and if you want to divide the room some more, this is a pretty cool divider here, and the bathroom has a divider as well. Really cool. All right, let's check out the bathroom. So each room does have a rope, and also life vests for people who can't swim, aka people like me. Um, there's an ironing board as well as a safe. One thing to be aware of is if you do activate the safe, you have to be sure it's closed at all times. So if you leave the room and the safe is open, housekeeping can't get in. So it's kind of like everything's connected. So let's make sure that your stuff is safe and that it doesn't get stolen. Here's a vanity area. So there's body lotion and shower gel in these, along with some toiletries. So nail filer, shower cap, sewing kit, double vanity. Shower with an adjustable sliding shower head thing. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think I would ever put it this high, but put it down to my height. And then they also have shower gel, shampoo, and conditioner available. And in here is the washroom. So the toilet is in here. Bathtub looks like it can only fit one person in here. I'm actually surprised. Oh, you can't open the windows. Oh, okay. So you can open the windows and enjoy a bath. And are you supposed to open this one? Oh, you can. Good to know. So yeah, natural ventilation for the bathroom. All right, and let's go check out the main attraction. The main highlight of this room is, of course, the overwater bungalow deck. Chairs, patio. Yeah, basically you have instant access to the water down below. This is pretty cool. Most of the resorts have the stairs just like 
bigberry, but this one you can just like slide down and pick up whatever you want. It's heavy, so I get a lot of stuff to them. But we had the bird friends early on the deck, so they left their mark. Oh, and there's a shower here as well. Okay, so we also got some cool welcome gifts. This right here is some coconut and then a really cool fruit platter. So it's honeydew, oranges, pineapple, and watermelon. If you're curious what a standard beach bungalow looks like, we'll show you later in the video. There are a few ways to book this property. The first is to pay out of pocket. It can range anywhere from $500 to $1,000 per night. A few guests we met on property booked it through Costco Travel, and they said it was around $8,000 for 10 nights exploring the various islands in French Polynesia. If you book using points, it's usually for the standard room on the beach. Since we had IHG Platinum status and the occupancy rate was low, we were upgraded to an overwater bungalow. If you don't get automatically upgraded, sometimes when you check in, you'll be given the option to pay a few hundred dollars to upgrade to the overwater bungalow. If this is the only resort you're visiting in Bora Bora, then I would say it's worth the splurge. However, if you are visiting other resorts, then it's not worth the upgrade. Save your money and go on some excursions instead. On that note, if you want to learn more about hotel cards or any other credit card that can help you book this trip, I'll leave a link down below in the description box. Using those links really helps support channel and travels like this, so thank you in advance. If you're into snorkeling, there's not much activity around the hotel waters. Definitely book an excursion if you want to see the stingrays, nurse sharks, and the vibrant corals. We'll cover those in a future video. The resort doesn't have a gym, but there is a restaurant and a bar. We redeemed our free drink vouchers here. Bar food was just okay. On the afternoon we were there, there was a free cooking demonstration on how to prepare the national dish of Tahiti, poisson cru, which consists of raw fish and diced vegetables soaked in coconut milk and marinated with lime juice. Definitely try it out if you get a chance. Within walking distance of the resort, you'll find a few bars and restaurants. Hey guys, so we are doing a tour of one of the beach rooms just to compare the difference. If you guys will notice, it looks pretty similar, so the same layout. So this is the bathroom, the same shower setup and tub setup. Vanity, if you didn't know better, you would think that we were just showing off the same room. But the big difference is that this overlooks the beach. So depending on the experience you're looking for, this might actually be a better stay. So this is less windy than the overwater bungalows. We have the same desk and also the couch over there. And I'm guessing these are the same. So yeah, these pop up in two if you want some fresh air. And coming out here, you have the same table and also a lot of opportunities to sunbathe and pretty good views. Yeah, pretty good room. The other interesting thing is that you actually have your own little shower out here that is a bit more consistent than the ones by the overwater ones. So if you go for a swim and you wanna come back here and wash off the salt water. One thing to note is that this is a double room for two people coming, but they also have other bed setups. The breakfast buffet retails for $45, but since we had IHD Platinum status, we were given the option to buy it at 50% off at check-in. The breakfast spread is basic and includes hot and cold items plus an omelet bar. It was fine for a two-night stay. French Polynesia is famous for its black pearls. Tahitian black pearls are considered among the most exotic and luxurious pearls in the world, making them a favorite among collectors and enthusiasts of fine jewelry. While commonly referred to as black, their colors actually range from metallic silver to the darkest jet black and also include shades of green, blue, gray, and purple. These pearls often have overtones that add a beautiful iridescence, making each pearl unique. There is a Robert Wan shop at the resort. Even if you're not interested in jewelry, the staff is super friendly and I think it's a great opportunity to learn about pearls, what to look for, the grading, and the price ranges. If you venture into the main town, Tahia Pearls has a boutique where some designs are more unique. The shopping is eligible for a tax refund if you're not from Tahiti. One nice thing about the local restaurants on the main island is that they usually have a complimentary shuttle that can pick up and drop you off. We decided to try restaurant Matria Beach. Good ambiance, but the food was just okay. Entrees range from 2,600 to 3,600 francs. 
I think if you live in a city with a lot of good seafood, then you might be a bit disappointed. Both of the dishes we ordered were a little overcooked. If you made it this far in the video, leave a drink emoji in the comments below and I'll try to heart and respond to it. My question to you is what are your thoughts on Le Moana and which resorts are on your bucket list for Bora Bora? Let me and everyone else know in the comments below. See you in the next one. Goodbye, guys. I'll see you underneath. Wait, I can't control that. <laughs>